Hello again, future respiratory therapist. So Jay Stahl sent me a, a comment on one of the videos and he said, hey, me and my classmates are calculating the PAO2 in class the other day and we were able to get the right answer, but we have no idea why we're, why we're calculating this and how is this information beneficial to us. Okay, so I'm going to break it down. I'm just going to answer that simple question. Why are we calculating P big A O2? And it simply comes down to this. This is your alveoli. This is your arterial blood. So this is P A O2, little A O2. This is P big A O2. Okay, now you have to understand that whatever O2 is in the alveoli, most of it should diffuse across. Okay, so if you're on room air, your A to A difference should be relatively small. 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury, somewhere around there, which means most of the oxygen that comes into the alveoli diffuses over into arterial oxygenation. It means your units are working very efficiently. Okay, now, when, let's just say you have a PAO2, P big AO2 of Let's just go with let's just go with 210. Okay, let's just say you have a really high FiO2 being administered. And now your PaO2 is 210 and your PaO2 is 50. Okay? Now look, your A to A difference is now 210 minus 50 equals 160. Now this is important because this is telling you that you have something that is blocking the oxygen that's inside of the alveoli from diffusing into the, to the arterial blood, which means you have a big shunt, something blocking alveolar oxygen from getting into the arterioles, which leads to an increase in your A to A gradient. Okay? Then you're going to have a shunt. Now, how do you fix this? Okay, that's the question. So now we know why. Why are we calculating this? Because our alveolar partial pressure of oxygen should indicate to us how effectively, when we look at our A-to-A difference, how effectively that oxygen is diffusing across. Okay, if you if you drew this blood gas right here and you got instead of 50, your alveolar partial pressure of oxygen is 210. But when you run your blood gas, you get 190. Now you have 210 minus 190, and you get 20. That's a relatively small number when you're talking about A to A differences, especially when you start adding higher levels of FIO2s. Then look, your lungs are working very, very efficiently. Most of the oxygen that is coming into the alveoli is crossing into arterial blood. But when you have a big gradient, then it becomes even more significant, and it's all an indication of an oxygenation problem. Most of the time, it ties back to a shut of some sort, either, either a pneumonia, an atelectasis, pulmonary edema, something preventing alveolar oxygen from diffusing into arterial oxygenation. So when you get done with this formula, and you calculate your A to A, or you calculate your big A, O2, your P, big A, O2, label it alveolar O2. It must be higher than arterial O2 so that it diffuses from a higher pressure gradient to a lower pressure gradient. The wider that gap between these two gets is an indication to you of the severity of the shunt, which is the result of blood passing by alveoli, not picking up blood, and then this deoxygenated venous blood that does not pick up oxygen returns back to the left side of the heart and gets sent out as arterial blood at the state of hypoxemia. Okay? Lots of oxygen in alveoli, not a lot in the arteries. That's the breakdown. That's all it comes down to. That's why you calculate the A to A difference. How do you calculate the A to A difference? That's why you calculate the P big AO2 to understand and to give you a picture of the efficiency of gas diffusion at the alveolar unit. Okay, Jay, I hope this helps. Quick video, less than five minutes, can't believe I got it done. Maybe a record for me. If you have any more questions, send me a comment, send me a question. 
You can send me an email, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. However you want to do it, I'm here to help. Hope you all guys have a great day.